It was always difficult for people who knew Nancy Burgesson. In 2009, the public defender was murdered the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, and police are still working to crack the case. And tonight, Tim Becker reveals some issues with the investigation that some think may leave this unsolved forever. It's obviously hard because it's the holidays, and it's tough to, to just relive over and over again kind of what that, that Thanksgiving, that first Thanksgiving was like. Four years later, it is still painful for Jamie Bergeson. Nancy, her mother, left the world too suddenly, too soon. And exactly what happened to her remains an open book. We would love for there to be closure. Closure for her daughter and closure for her family and closure for all of us. Did you get a rose in the Yeah. Roses to remember her. Nancy's teammates from a paddling club and some friends gathered again this week, as they have each year, to keep her flame burning until their questions find answers. The more time that goes by without the case being solved, I think it's just harder and harder and harder for everybody. Manual strangulation, a lot of times you'll have bruising from the fingertips or the hands themselves, uh, ligature like a rope or something, you'll see the marks of the rope in the, uh, in the skin itself. There were no visible marks on Nancy Bergeson when she was found dead in her southwest Portland home. So first responders and investigators did not suspect she was a victim of murder. Only an autopsy more than 12 hours later would reveal that. She was uh, strangled with some type of soft object, a scarf or something along those lines perhaps. This is called a genetic analyzer. Forensic scientist Ray Grimsbo has been to hundreds of scenes like the one at Nancy Bergeson's home the night she died. And the investigation process, he says, is different if they suspect murder. There's no question it's a homicide. They're going to be much more intent on looking for evidence to link someone to the crime than they are if it's a natural causes. Which means there's a chance the crime scene was compromised before the medical examiner finally ruled the death a murder the next day. And police say that first day they would have spent searching for evidence of a killer was lost. It's difficult to say um, at this point as to whether that time makes a huge difference, but um, I know we'd like to have it back. Lost time and possible lost evidence has some now wondering if that's part of the reason this case remains unsolved. The first few things that were done in the investigation maybe were, were not ideal, but again, you can't go back in time and change history, unfortunately, and what happened to happen. It's extremely frustrating. Um, personally, I feel that it is so rare for a murder to go this long in Portland without being solved. I, I just don't know what to make of that. There's some place that we can come, you know, and kind of be close to Nancy because she loved it here. The victim's mother and daughter. I would beg them to come forward and give any information that they have. Need answers, but if clues were compromised, we'll never know now. People are always going to say, well, I wonder, because we, we can't think of everything. That's where the brainstorming comes in between the detectives. Until that brainstorming unlocks the puzzle, Did you get a rose? Nancy's friends vow to continue their waterborne rose paddling parade in her honor. It's a sad occasion. I mean, it's we love all being together and thinking about Nancy, but it's sad, and we would love not to have to do this again. Tim Becker, Coin 6 News.